So money means nothing And you can't sell your soul I dream of world Where we all grow Learn from our past And let things go Nobody's homeless And nobody's cold Not desperate for nothing So nobody's stone I dream of That we can be proud of But that can't exist If we forget about love So excited to have you, Moshe Manna. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So here we are in Miami. We're in uh, again with Revolution 93.5. And as I look to my right, uh, you know, to the to the west of this block in the building we're in, there is a Manna Convention Center. And y you know, you start seeing this Manna Convention Center, and then you see these mm, these really traditional, decade-old shows like the Home and Design Show that's been around more than 40 years, always in the Miami Beach Convention. And, all. and now its new home is Mana Convention Center. They're already knowing your dream. They want to see more and more of it. And But the common person walking down the block, all of a sudden, what do you mean? The home and design show is not anymore in the convention center? No, it's at Mana Convention Center. And now you say, oh, Mana Convention Center, Red Dot, Spectrum, Mana Convention Center. And now you start seeing a little bit, and that's not even your vision. And when I came to Miami, because... I used to come to Miami and we used to go to South Beach. And there was a lot of issues with South Beach that I didn't like. And when I came to Wynwood, it was really a very, very bad area, you know. But because of my experiences that I've done in, in the past in New York and everything that I've done, I felt like really Miami need a place where we can build our cultural infrastructure. So once I accumulated it, and I start coming with announcement, Wynwood will be the, will, will host the cultural infrastructure of Miami. Miami needed a place like this, where it's not going to be exclusive like South Beach used to be, it's going to be inclusive. And that's the emphasis that we put on from the get-go, in terms of fashion shows, art, um, the, uh, the uh, you know, um, all kind of, you know, technology events that we had done. Many, many, many events that we had done, you know, music events. Every music event cost me 250000 300000 Cost me. Right. But it was so investment in the neighborhood. It right, was, right. It was investment in the neighborhood. Giving the facilities for all kind of causes. And we created the buzzword. So, because I knew where we're going. When my friends were, Moshe, Shu, you know, I know where we're going. Give me five years to ten years. We're going to turn it around. So I had convictions that we can, Miami need some kind of an area where everybody can come together and play and not to be threatened and make it affordable for everybody. But at the same time, because I've been going to China back and forth, I had the idea of that we need to turn Miami to a global trade hub because it's nothing more painful for me when people come and ask me for a job, and I say, I don't have a job. And I know these people, they finish school, a lot of them, top of the class, they've been asked what to do, how, and, and they did exactly what they were told to do. But when they come out, they don't have a job. And Miami doesn't offer these opportunities. So for me, That's it true. was kind of, it wasn't about the money, it was about really creating something impactful. And I said, we, are going to 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 uh, to to start the movement to it, turning the chapter of Henry Flagler. Right. He started this as tourist destination, but nobody turned the chapter to make it a business destination. A business destination, and it's so, so true. And I always said, you know, there is so many galleries you can open, so many coffee shops, so many nightclubs, but if you don't have the business behind it, it's not going to happen. So and that's why we worked strongly and diligently with the Chinese, with the Korean, with Latin America to build this, uh, you know, global trade up. And that's and that's what I want to tell, you know, our fans at uh, 93.5 
that we want to be able to talk about not only your vision, but your vision is more than a lot of people would say, well, he's been investing and he has acquired a lot of land and a lot of acres, but we don't see, you know, we don't see any building. We don't see anything going on. It's still closed. It's still this and that, but it's because you have this commitment that this is not just going to be putting paint on a building and just opening the doors and putting some business and watching the business close down uh, two years later and you don't care because you get the triple net and you're not that kind of developer. You don't care about losing the money on all the events of just making the buzz happen because you've actually carried all these projects on your own. You know, in many ways, you just lease it and don't make the money back. But because you have this larger scale and um and with me also we have your friend an architect here bernard uh sis i don't want to siskovich so bernard siskovich welcome to 93.5 revolution at the 305 we're so happy to have you here i always see you in many events with mana yep. uh walking his entourage is uh bernard and this good looking tall young fella here and as many other people also <laughs> because uh you know you you could tell a great uh boss with the people that are around him uh, years and years i uh, you know it's going on two years now almost the same people they all say wonderful one of the days i was waiting for you and the security was there and boy does that security guy loves you oh i've been with him for almost nine years and uh, and that says a lot you know when you have your top executives and your securities all talking the same way so bernard now here's how did you meet moshe mana i mean he you know this is does the story go beyond architect and developer or did you have a story in New York as well? And sorry, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. It's not going to come out of the closet now, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, has he, de- <laughs> has he developed other projects in New York? <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Silly, silly. But I got to <laughs> tell you, Mana Winwood America Asia Trade Center. I mean, that is amazing. And I have sat and, and Moshe has shown me a small two minute, three minute uh, you know, uh, plans that you, your office has created, putting his vision into the architectural structural planning. And when you see it's, it's, it makes so much sense. And I'm so proud of you that you didn't become, not to say any other developers, because there is, you know, it's the sum of the parts that equal the whole. And we know Winwood, you know, God bless Tony Goldman's vision and 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 David Lombardi and, and Tony Cho and many other people. But you take it beyond, my friend. You take it to a whole nother level. You're looking for my children's children's future. Now, that's different. When someone looks into their children's children's future, you're not thinking about what I'm going to do today or next year. You're thinking about how can my grandchild's child live off of what I'm building a legacy here. And that's a different type of developer. And I love that. And I've seen your sustainable, uh, uh, you know, uh, plans, and it's just incredible. And so, do you? How do you guys work together? Because I see what you've done structurally, and and I know it's your vision, but it just came together with what I'm seeing. And the nice thing is, you guys got funded, and I hear something's going to break ground this year. Of course. Can you tell me a little bit about that? How about you, Bernard? Tell us what we can look forward to. And Mano Winwood. Well, I think what you can look forward to is a lot of exciting new opportunities. But the the way that I met Moish was at breakfast in Midtown. I don't know if he remembers. Uh, we were introduced, he woke and up um, and he was saying, "Yeah, but I don't want Midtown. I want something different." And I said, "Well, you know, of course, because there's only one Midtown. There's only one Mana Winwood. There's only this is how design works." And and Moish really has. Um, a unique and incredible vision about his his thoughts about the world. So to be a developer is one thing, but to be a visionary who deals with social issues, cultural issues, whenever you hear him talk, you hardly ever hear him talk about buildings. Exactly, he's always yes. talking about culture, he's talking about art, he's talking about trade, he's talking about jobs. Because mm-hmm. as you heard from the great story, I love listening to yes. the story of his yes. of how he got going. Um, I, I, it's a person who 
had to put one foot in the other until he figures it out. And um, eventually, if you put it together well, mm. you're, you have the intelligence, and I know his fascination with history. Uh, you, you're able to put all this together and make something out of it. And that's what Mana Winwood, Mana Collective, Mana Common, and Mana Panama. <laughs> and I just love it. And but let me tell you this, Mana Panama is still, we are working on it. Right. We're working with the government of Panama. Right. We have great ideas how to do it. And we're going to connect the world and the world is going to be really big. It's okay that I mentioned Mana Panama. Yeah, yes, very okay, much. Okay, good. Much, okay. Very, much. very I, much. I think, you know, like, uh, you know, Panama is really, it's the gate for Latin America beside Miami. And I felt that it's really very important that Panama and Miami will be in sync and work together and not once against each other. Thank so you thank so you, Moshe Mana. Thank we you. appreciate you. 93.5 Revolution, Thank our you. talk with Susanna Baker. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Thank you. Bye.